today we're going to put together a tabletop system. This is going to help you hopefully with your assembly and answer a lot of questions you might have. These are the trim pieces, the parts that go around the bottom of the system. It comes with a protective film. This just comes off of here. These are pH monitors. This is a uh, pH monitor and an ammonia monitor. And while we're on this subject, we'll just cover it real quick. If your pH from your tap tests about 6.2 to say an 8.0, there's really no adjustments that you need to make. If your pH is above an 8, then you need to lower that a little bit. And the best way to do it is to use distilled white vinegar. So you would put about a half a teaspoon of distilled white vinegar right where the water is flowing, the fountain is flowing, and then test uh, or, or take a look at your meter oh maybe 10 hours later and see what it looks like. If it still hasn't lowered then add another half teaspoon. Continue to do that maybe once a day until you get around a 7. 7 is perfect but anywhere between about a 6.2 and an 8.0 is acceptable. To raise the pH, if the pH is testing like a 6.0 or a 5.5 that's acidic. Uh, what you'd want to do is add a little bit of baking soda or lime that will buffer the pH up and there again maybe a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon at a time once a day and that should buffer it up. Now we also send with the system oyster shells and these oyster shells you want to bury these right under where the water's flowing in and these will automatically buffer the pH up. Um, if you have real acidic water, you may need to help it out a little bit with some baking soda. But this will a lot of times do it automatically if you're borderline. They have a natural pH of a, about 7.4. And what happens is if the water becomes acidic, then it begins to eat away at the shells. And that releases lime and calcium into your system and it buffers the pH up. So it's an automatic way to control your pH. Uh, before we get off of this subject, the ammonia is very important. If the ammonia level gets too high, and that would be your fish are creating waste more than the system is able to handle, if it gets to the toxic level on here, uh, you could start losing fish. So what you want to do is keep an eye on this. If it hits the alarm area, then you want to take a little bit of water out of the system and put some fresh water in. So maybe uh, two or three cups at a time of water you would take out of the fish tank and put some fresh water back in and that would keep your ammonia in check. This is cotton string and we'll go over what to do with this later. This is basically for getting your seedlings started. These are uh, felt pads. They go on the bottom of the fish tank so you don't scratch your counter. This is a supplement. It's a mixture of azomite, kelp, and some different uh, things, chelated iron. You would just put a little bit of this in with some water, mix it up, and put this directly on the plant roots. This is your cap that fits on the drain line. This is a pipe cleaner to clean your drain line with. A few packs of seeds to get you started with. And these are uh, adhesive dots, basically, to uh, attach the trim. Now that we've gone through all the parts and pieces, let's go ahead and assemble it. So we remove the top. Take our pebbles out. A real easy way to rinse the pebbles off. So you want to take, um, leave them in the bag that they're in. Take a sharp knife and you would poke holes all through here, all the way around. Then you would run your water inside the bag. You can even put this whole thing down in the sink. Run your hands through the pebbles to get the dirt off and uh, run your water through there until it's coming out clean. That's an easy way to rinse these off and then you can put them in the system. So, okay, we're going to install our water line. So we take our top bed. We're just going to poke the hose through there. We're going to pull it until we can come up about flush with this. And actually, I like to leave a little slack in this so that you can move it. You really want your fountain to be back in this area, away from the drain line, because you want the water to come in 
the fountain to flow and then kind of move this way to the drains. So a little extra is fine. Our next step is our felt pads. So you can actually do this either way. You can use the felt pads if you want to be able to slide it around on the counter and not scratch anything up. Or it also comes with rubber feet and you can put rubber feet on here instead if you want it to stick and stay in one spot. Very important though, whichever one you go with, you want to put this center support in here. So you should have five feet on the bottom of your bed. Next step is we're going to stack the top bed on and we're going to attach the water pump. So we take our water pump. This is so difficult. It's just going to stick on the hose. That's it. Now I like to put my pump where it's going to be hidden by one of these. So if your trim piece is going to, however you want to do the trim. You can do the trim like this or you can go like that. You can do whatever you want to. That's kind of the reason we left this loose, is to let you customize it however you want to. But basically, if you're gonna uh, put the big part here, you can hide your pump right there so nobody can see it. You fill this up with pebbles. This would probably be a good time if you do have some decorative rock or plants that you want to put in the fish tank. This would be the time to do it. And this does slide back and forth, so it kind of gives you some room. But of course, your hand fits in the back. So we would pour the pebbles in here. So this is the arrangement that we've chosen to go with our trim pieces. Once you've got that figured out, you would just peel off the blue protective coating. And if we're going to stick it like that, then we take our glue dots. They're very sticky. And that's pretty much it. Then we just stick it in place. So we're going to bury our oyster shells. We're going to just put them right here where the water flows over them. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm going to put it up close to that and then bury, bury the oyster shells and the water the water will flow over them and adjust the pH automatically. Now after we've filled the water up uh, in the tank, we're going to let the pump run for about four days. So before you add the nitrifying bacteria, you want to let the system run for four days. What this will do is it will evaporate out any chlorine that's in your water if you're on city water. It, chlorine will evaporate out after about four days. Then you can add the nitrifying bacteria to the system and then, then you can also add your fish. So you want to wait until the chlorine's out of the system before you do that. Well, this has been running for a couple of days, so I'm going to go ahead and put our nitrifying bacteria in. And that will boost the system. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this same bottle. I'm going to fill this back up with some aquaponic water. Or you could use tap water, doesn't matter. Put a little bit of supplement. I'm going to put a, uh, about a half a teaspoon or a half a cap full of the supplement powder in here and mix it up good and this will create a uh, supplement that we use to pour on the roots of our new seedlings and to pour on any plants that are going. You want to pour it directly on the roots and don't pour too much on there. If you pour too much it'll turn your water dark and uh, since this is a display unit we want it to stay clear and clean then we don't want to overpower the system with too much of this. We just put a little bit right on the root system and then it won't get all in the system and dirty up our water. I want to show you how to start a seedling in these systems. The outer edges are going to stay dry and that's okay. This thing stays about half full of water all the time. So what we want to do is just situate the string so that the seeds will stay moist. We don't want them to stay too wet but they can't be dry. So, so we just want to bury this string vertically so that one end is down in the water and it will wick or soak the water up and nourish our seedling at the top. So we're going to bury this in the system. I'm going to go down until I can feel that I'm in the water. And then I'm going to take the top of the string and I'm going to fray it out. And I'm going to set it situated about an inch below the surface of the pebbles. 
So we're going to put our uh, supplement together here. I'm going to do about a half of a cap full of our supplement. And mix it into our water. Now this is important. We just want to saturate or soak the end of that string. That's about all we need. And now I've already got a seedling started over here. I'm just going to give it a, a little dose. Now see, I didn't, I didn't pour the whole bottle on it, just a little bit. I've got a jalapeno plant over here. I'm going to go ahead and give him a drink. Now the rest of this I'm going to put in the refrigerator. If you don't keep it in the refrigerator, it goes bad pretty fast and it stinks pretty bad. So you want to uh, either use it up or put it in the refrigerator. Now we're going to go ahead and put a couple of seeds. I've got three lettuce seeds here and I'm going to get them to kind of stick right on top of that string. Now I'm going to carefully cover it up with pebbles without knocking those seeds off of there so that the light doesn't shine directly on those seeds. We want them to be in the dark. But I don't want to knock the seeds off the string. The string has been saturated with our supplement. And now I just want to make sure that that whole area is moist. So I'm just going to hit it again with a little dose just to make sure that everything is saturated. Now what will happen is in about 10 minutes or 15 minutes the water will soak up that string and it will keep that area moist. And the first thing the seed will get after it sprouts is uh, the nutrition from the kelp and maxi crop and uh, chelated iron and all the things that are in this. So it will get you off to a good start. Before we get off the subject of the seeds, there's some really important factors involved in sprouting your seeds and getting things going. Temperature is probably the number one thing and honestly if you're in a 70 degree environment this is going to be lower than that because there's water in it so if the air temperature in your house is 70 this could be 65 or lower and so that could uh, cause problems to sprouting seeds and to get your plants going so it may not work you may have to sprout your seeds separately in a separate container and there's tons of information on YouTube and online on how to sprout seeds there's a hundred ways to do it it's not really a perfect way. Basically, it's temperature and time and sunlight. Um, so depending on what the situation is in, in your system, you may or may not have success sprouting your seeds directly in the system. You can always get plants from a nursery or um, any store that has you know, plants that are already going. You just want to rinse the dirt off the roots. Rinse as much of it off of there as you can. Don't damage the plants, be very gentle with them, and then uh, just kind of stuff them down in there so that the roots are down in that water table. Or you can put a string, a cotton string in there to make sure that it keeps the uh, roots moist. Now this pepper plant, uh, I transplanted in from a, a little sprout, and it's done great. I don't really recommend putting uh, peppers in a system like this. These are really small. I'm just experimenting, you know, trying different things. These are going to be really good for, you know, parsley and oregano and any kind of herbs. These are really what uh, this is created for is to be kind of an herb garden for you. You could put basil in here, but any kind of plant that's going to get huge, you want to keep it cut back and, and keep it to a minimum. Once a month, you need to remove this cap right here and you want to move the pebbles back so the pebbles don't get down inside. That would be bad. We, won't, we don't want to stop it up. So want to remove the cap and take your pipe cleaner. Look down inside and make sure it's clean. Actually, this is perfectly clean. This system's been running about a month. There's no roots in there. There's no fish buildup, so I don't need to do anything. But if it was uh, cruddy and, and built up, then I would take this and just clean it out inside. Put your cap back on and you're good to go.